Hey everybody, and welcome to day three. So glad you're still with me. I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you're learning new things. I hope you're discovering some efficiencies, some maybe little kinks in your playing that are getting ironed out in these fairly simple but straightforward exercises. More than anything, I wish I could hear your questions and comments or thoughts, but this is the way it is for now, and I'm glad you're here anyway. So, you know, one of the things that I've learned uh, in many years of practicing and trying to become more consistent and efficient is that much of my progress has been about undoing, I guess just as much of my progress has been about undoing as it is doing more. And some of these exercises are kind of highlighting maybe there's a little tension or maybe a little bit overdoing it with using the tongue or you know, putting a little space, preparing an articulation. Those are doing too much. And the, the process that I've been trying to share with you is how do we make those simple so that they can be consistent and focus on the beauty of sound and that kind of thing. So today, what I wanna focus on is intervals. And so we're gonna, I've got three exercises I wanna give you. One of them should have come in the email. If you didn't get that, send a send an email reply to trumpetmastery2020 at gmail. Uh, we'll get you set up with that, but it should have come in your broadcast here. So today, I'm going to do all these exercises on C trumpet. Our excerpt is going to be on C trumpet, although if you only have a B flat trumpet, that's totally fine. But to kind of keep things equal, I'm going to do it on C trumpet today. So you're going to need your Arbin book to get started. And I want you to, I want to draw your attention to Arbin number 10 right at the beginning of the book. So this should be on page nine, exercise number 10, starting on a G. And what we're gonna do in our first exercise is we're gonna buzz it. Now, a couple things to keep in mind when you're buzzing these and, and doing these interval exercises. You wanna make sure that you hear the interval, of course. Anything like a, to quote Chick Corea, or maybe not quote, but any, if you can't hear it, you know, you, got, you can't play it or only play what you can hear kind of thing. Uh, it's a lofty order and something I'm continuing to work on, but it's a good place to start. So make sure you hear the interval. Even if it's a half step, make sure it's not too far. That's number two, is to make sure that our intervals are as close together as we possibly can get. I remember Mark Gould telling me in a lesson years ago, Tom, you're making all the notes too far apart. He's like, I try to make them close together. So I think that's great advice. Shout out to Mark Gould. Third, we want to continue, even though we're doing these skips in an interval-like thing, we always want to be keeping the linear. And the third exercise today, um, I'm kind of proud of it. It's a little mental trick of how to continue to notice if we are thinking vertically as opposed to a linear fashion, horizontally. And the fourth thing is try to incorporate days one and two in today. The ideas of ease of response, making sure that you're leading with the air, not always needing the tongue to, to start the note. And two, that you're not over preparing and putting space in between here, always singing through the, through the sound as much as possible. All right, so let's get started. Exercise number 10 in the Arbin book. We're gonna use the mouthpiece. I wanna give myself a reference pitch here. I encourage you to use piano and really make sure that you hear the exact interval, almost as clean or like just as clean as a piano. So in the stamp style, we're gonna hold our mouthpiece not like this. We're gonna hold our mouthpiece more like this, okay? And we're gonna fairly slowly buzz this. Now what you might notice here, what I want you to try to avoid is any kind of scooping from below into the note or from above that might sound a little like this. So I'm going, it's very quick sometimes, I'm trying to make it obvious, but this is gonna affect um, your center, which is 
intervals is about getting in the center of the note and it's going to affect your sound and the quality of your articulation. So make sure you're not scooping from below and also make sure you're not scooping from above like that kind of thing. Close, but you get the point. So that's exercise number one for today. Playing this number 10 on the mouthpiece, making sure that you are centering these as well as possible without any kind of scoops. All right, so number two, exercise number two, we're just gonna simply play this and add a couple variations. Again, incorporating days one and two in terms of ease of response and singing through as much as possible, not over preparing the next articulation with space. Again, anytime you do any exercise that kind of is a little bit of a, a little bit of a pattern that you're going to go through different keys, try to squeeze as much value out of that as possible. And I'm talking specifically about the last note. Just don't throw it away because you're going to need that skill in many of your excerpts, many of your solos, many of your phrases that you play. So a few uh, variations. Um, you don't need to play all of number 10 if you don't feel like it, if it's a little bit mentally tiring or if you're not, if you want to focus on the first couple for high quality, I think that's totally fine. Um, and two variations here. You can add any uh, division of rhythm that you want. It can be on the first note or the first part of the bar, second part of the bar, it doesn't matter. All the rules still apply. So for example, essentially is this so we want to make sure that at the very first exercise we're centering not overshooting those so that our notes don't sound like this we don't want any kind of scooping like that that really cuts into our projection, it cuts into the color of sound, it cuts into the beauty of the sound, all that kind of stuff. If you want, if this is, if you're a more moderate or advanced player, and you're like, Tom, this is pretty easy, you do this, and you feel like you're playing it at a pretty high level, the third variation would be go to Schlossberg page 10, exercise 36. This is a great page, lots of variations. Try to still apply all the rules of quality and attention to detail. All right, now let's go to exercise number three. This is the uh, interval exercise thing that, um, that I've sort of uh, created here. And this is a little bit of a play, a mental play. You know, I, I think sometimes about balance and sort of uh, what, what are some machined things that are very balanced, like a, a car tire is really balanced. You know, they put a little weight sometimes in there to make sure that when it's spinning super fast, you're going, 80 miles an hour down the road, that the tire spins true. Now, if that tire was out of balance and you only drove 10 miles an hour, that wouldn't really be that big a deal, but you would really notice it at 80 miles an hour. And so when I think about trumpet playing in intervals or like uh, technique, what we're trying to get is like uh, the most um, fine tuned, minimal amount of effort to go between these intervals so that eventually we can have high speeds, flexibility between all these and high quality of center of pitch. So the reason this first exercise starts in this way is to see if there's any kind of mental thing going on when you push your finger down. We really should be thinking linear, right? So the first one says, just hold the G, finger the F sharp on the lead pipe like so. Now, when you do that, did you notice any kind of waning in the sound? Did you go at all? Like that? 
If you did, then that, that's kind of great because you notice that your intervals are already trying to get farther apart, but you didn't actually play the interval yet. So that's how that's the root of this exercise. And then I'm going to show you one variation on it. So we're going to go like this. one little part there like the first line but you don't have to do that you can simply do the bend while fingering the next interval so let's say I want to slur between and these you can slur I would encourage you to slur them at first and then tongue them let's say you want to go G to D so you finger D on the lead pipe while bending a half step So when you do the bend, I want you to not, don't let the jaw drop, don't let the aperture get all big. You're actually coming in, bringing focus, bringing more flexibility into the aperture here, okay? Not dropping down, not getting bigger. You want this to be close. Okay, so that's, that's this exercise. I think it's pretty straightforward. Again, they're slurred. Here's one little bonus where I hope this can go for you. You could also transpose this up to the next partial and use this also on Schlossberg page 10, number 36. But let's do one little bonus thing here. Let's say you start on concert C and you want to get an octave really close. Well, what if we did a whole step bend that might that much engagement? So for instance, this. We're going to try to get the fourth to be that close. Now, I'm going to try to get the octave as much as close as an engagement of a whole step. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I'm trying to get that spot of an octave to just be as close as a whole step. Even closer if I possibly can. All right, so this is day three, all about centering intervals, making sure we're true in our ability to go from note to note. This is going to be massively effective in all excerpts, and especially the one that we're working on here for this coming end of the week. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow when we're going to talk about timing drills and having a commanding sound without burning all your resources. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.